So what do you do when you have a client who's scheduled for a half hour session and they show up five minutes late? Well, there are places to cut corners, but I don't think that your warm up necessarily should be one. I don't think you should get rid of it. I think you need to keep some very specific sections in it, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Why don't I just cut out the warm up? Well, we want the increase in flexibility or mobility that we see with warm-up exercises. We do some, some exercises we call resets that instantly increase mobility. So I, I will prioritize that with a, a large subset of my training population. Uh, we also want to increase the intensity of what their body is being exposed to and prepare the nervous system and the musculoskeletal system for exercise. So for example, you're just talking about warming up, even if it's just body temperature, right? I need you to get ready to do more intense, more strenuous activities. How do you structure a warm up that only takes five minutes? Well. I'm thinking of four specific categories, right? First, we do a little reset, a, a breathing-oriented exercise that's designed to increase your mobility in a very short period of time. But then we want to increase the intensity or the speed of the ex exercises that you're doing. So second, I'll think of more of an alternating, maybe unilateral kind of movement uh, where my arms are alternating from side to side, my legs are alternating from side to side. Think of like a, a walking lunge, maybe with a, a rotation to one side. Uh, from there, I want to introduce bigger compound movements, something like a squat or a deadlift. Uh, it, for this one, it kind of depends on what my specific person needs to work on the most. A lot of people, what I like to give them is a plate squat. So I'll give them 10 pounds to hold in their hands. They're going to squat down, reach the plate forward as they squat down. That helps them learn where to put their weight. A lot of people are holding their weight a little bit too far forward on their toes, and I want them to learn to sit back into their hips and into their leg muscles. Then lastly, I've got to get that heart rate up, so we're going to increase the speed. If it's more of a general population client, I might introduce a uh, low intensity skipping exercise. If it's someone in pain, maybe something like that. Um, maybe even a compound movement that's just done a little bit faster. And if it's an athlete, I'm going to give them more dynamic, more reactive stuff. Maybe cutting drills, uh, maybe jumping exercises. We have less time for a warm up, so let's go through three specific examples from three hypothetical people that I might be dealing with. First, somebody who's broken. Well, they're, they've got constant knee pain or shoulder pain or whatever they're always dealing with. Well, I still want to give them a reset. I can't give you a, a specific reset because every reset that I give is addressing very specific limitations um, for specific people. So I can't give you one that's kind of overlying. Use whatever methodology you, li you like to use. I use the Postural Restoration Institute and their exercises for that. Second, uh, some sort of alternating lower level movement. Maybe I'll do like a walking cross crawl. So I'm just alternating here. I stand on one leg, stand on the other leg, right? It's just mimicking gait. It's mimicking walking where I bring one leg up, one arm forward, and then I switch sides. Kind of gets them, you know, a little bit more free, activating both sides of their brain. After that, maybe a, a little bit bigger compound movement, like a side lunge with a reach. I'll have them step to the side and reach with the opposite hand, and then I'll have them go to the other side. I like to have them shift from one side to the other, alternating sides, instead of just knocking out all of one and then knocking out all of the other, because I think it better prepares them for the higher intensity stuff that we're about to do. And then lastly, a fourth exercise, maybe a higher speed. Maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll have them slow it down and, and spend a little bit more time on that reset or on the lower level stuff because some people just aren't ready for the, the higher level, the higher speed, the higher load exercises. Scenario number two. What if we have someone who's a general population fat loss client but isn't dealing with a whole lot of uh, nagging chronic pain? Well, first I'm still going to give them a reset because I like the, uh, what the increased mobility affords me with them. It just lets us do cooler stuff, cooler exercises in the gym. 
Uh, at, from there, one of my favorites that I give to a lot of people is called a groiner with overhead reach. So they'll set up in like a push-up position, maybe maybe not quite on the ground, but hands elevated on a bench, say, and then they'll bring one foot forward and then reach up with one hand. So there we get this alternating activity, this trunk rotation, this whole body rotation that we were talking about before. Then also what I already mentioned, the plate squat, that reach at the bottom just really helps people learn how to access their leg muscles a little bit better, specifically glutes, hamstrings, quads, like knee extensors. Then fourth, I, I want to get them moving because it's very important that they, they start sweating, right? Because that's their goal, to lose weight, to be healthy. So for a more dynamic activity, I like skipping, whether that be low level or high level. Um, I'll just give them something they're familiar with. Scenario three, how about an athlete who comes in late for their abbreviated session? Well, I still want to give them a reset because having movement options is important to me and important to them in being able to uh, make decisions when they play. Uh, but for an athlete, they're going to be able to do quicker movements or more intense movements more readily. So I'm going to give them maybe a walking lunge pattern. I like to throw in rotations as well for my second exercise. For my third exercise, we start to get into more, more dynamic stuff, more elastic stuff. So any sort of maybe jumping drill or bounding exercise can go in there. And then lastly, we can do some speed work. So maybe work on hip turns, linear accelerations, any sort of thing to get them building that elastic strength for their workout. I hope this abbreviated warm-up structure was helpful for you if you have clients who tend to come in late or tend to have abbreviated sessions. I hope those three examples kind of hit home with you a little bit. Uh, if you have other examples that you'd like to share, let me know in the comments below. If you liked this, send it to someone. Um, sharing really helps us out as a small business. If you'd like to hear more from us, more from me, uh, head on over to www.ifastuniversity.com. That's I-F-A-S-T-University.com.